Hello everyone, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to talk about a mission that has never happened and probably never will. A mission called New Horizons 2. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this mission would entail, we're going to explore it hypothetically and also talk about why it has become impossible and why space exploration will actually be struggling in the next few years. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so using Space Engine today, we're going to explore this mission called New Horizons 2. New Horizons 1, if you don't remember, was the mission that visited Pluto in 2015 and took some amazing, amazing photos that we have today. And if we actually take a look at Pluto, let's go to Pluto for a second. The reason why we have such detailed photos of the surface now is because of New Horizons mission. It was a mission that basically flew past several planets, several moons of those planets, and then took amazing photos of this gorgeous dwarf planet and its companions Charon and some of the other ones as well. Now, what is New Horizons 2? So this was supposed to be a mission that would have been launched sometime after 2005 that would have done the following. It would have left Earth, and we're going to move away from Earth really slowly. It would have left Earth and fly past several planets uh, using so-called slingshot maneuver to um, acquire a little bit of velocity and take a few photos on the way as well. So, and obviously some of the first few planets it would have visited would be Jupiter and Saturn as well. Or at least Jupiter and Uranus, Th those were definitely planned. So let's go to Jupiter for a second and take a look at this beautiful gas giant and also some of its moons as well. So as you can see, there is a, you can even see the rings of Jupiter here. And if you didn't know that Jupiter had rings, yes, it does. It's not just Saturn's privilege. Actually, as a matter of fact, all of the gas giants in our solar system have rings. So uh, we would have actually flown past Jupiter. I'm going to simulate this right now. Took some photos of it, possibly take some photos of its uh, amazing satellites, like Io is a big favorite all the time. And then we would have escaped this and uh, followed the trajectory to the next planet, which is of course Uranus. And while I'm going to Uranus, I'm going to tell you why this mission has not happened and why it probably never will. And the reason is actually very simple. Even though NASA has given uh, enough money for this mission and has given enough support, by 2005, NASA also realized that uh, because of the complexity of production of something called plutonium-238, it was unfortunately unable to create a satellite that would have enough power to power itself through such a complex adventure. So all of the previous satellites uh, that we've launched so far, so here we're talking about Voyager 1, Voyager 2, um, Cassini-Higgins probe, and New Horizons probe, all of them actually had um, so-called... RTGs or radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Basically, um, it's the kind of a battery that uses plutonium-238 to create um, heat inside and that, that produces energy. Now, interestingly, uh, we used to have quite a lot of it. It used to be produced quite a lot, but it's a very complex production. And because of that, US kind of stopped producing it back in 1988, I believe, and was actually purchasing most of their um, plutonium-238 from the Russians. But then, because of the Russian economy crash and because Russia wasn't really doing so well, they also stopped producing it. And so now there's actually very little um, plutonium-238 left in the world. And US has about 35 kilograms of it or about... Um, 70 pounds of it left and so there's just enough of it left for a couple of missions maybe three missions and I think it's already all taken but anyway so then one of the next few objects that it would have uh, flown through would have been Neptune and specifically its moon Triton which we're very very curious about because it is the only moon we know that actually orbits in the opposite direction of everything else so there's a big chance that it was probably captured by um, by Neptune sometime in the past and there there is i was actually looking for it there it is it's see how he's going in the opposite direction so um captured a long time ago Ooh, going the wrong way and so here is triton a very mysterious unusual object that was very likely captured by neptune a long time ago and um is very likely not from this particular system and possibly even not from our solar system we don't really know where it came from but uh, that's the only explanation for why it's uh, orbiting in the opposite direction and so let's take a look at Triton and possibly even land here because it is a very, very beautiful frozen ice world as it's known in, the, in this particular game. 
And so anyway, so yeah, the plutonium-238 shortage caused NASA to reassess everything to start uh, focusing on missions that were a little bit closer to home because um, other than using solar panels, we can't really use anything else right now. All of the batteries that we used to use are currently unavailable to us. And um, so NASA focused on missions um, around our planet, around uh, some of the closer objects where you can kind of still use solar panels. Because that far away from, sun, from the sun, you won't be able to use solar panels anymore. They would not be very efficient. But what's really interesting about plutonium-238 is that originally it was actually invented for something completely different. It was actually made by the Los Alamos National Laboratory um, in the 60s and early 70s to basically be used in pacemakers. Cardiac pacemakers are the machines that um, you use to kind of help the heart uh, beat. Basically, people that suffer um, a heart attack or people that have weak hearts often use pacemakers. And the original pacemakers actually had plutonium-238 in them. And what is really, really cool is that it's essentially what um, Iron Man has. Iron Man has a pacemaker in his heart that kind of helps him uh, survive, basically, and gives his suit a lot of energy and uh, that particular pacemaker i believe also contains some sort of a plutonium isotope i don't exactly remember if you do know what it is please post it in the comments below but that's ex essentially what people used to have they used to have pacemakers made up of plutonium 238 and what's really awesome is that they're still functioning even 25 30 years later they're the only pacemakers that are still working and working just fine and people obviously didn't really get cancer or anything like that because those are those pacemakers are very very safe so plutonium 238 is not very dangerous at all and um, compared to battery generators, uh, they are very, very, very efficient and produce quite a lot of energy. All right, so after Triton, the next destination would have been one of the or several of the um, trans-Neptunian objects. And here we're talking about dwarf planets and potentially some really cool asteroids that you may have never heard of before. And today we're going, you're going to find out what they are. So one of them was going to be this. It's an asteroid that doesn't actually have a, a cool or unusual name, but it is a triple body system. It's called 1999 because that's when it was discovered, TC36. And it, as you can see, it is actually two asteroids, relatively same size asteroids, orbiting around one another. But if you zoom out, you'll realize there's actually a third object here as well. So it's a triple body system. And uh, here it is, here's the third object. And this is kind of their moon. So they have a moon and then there's a binary object in the middle. So these were, would have been pretty cool to observe and to visit. And what's really unusual about them is that they also have very, very low density. So it, chances are these are very porous. They have a lot of holes on the surface. And essentially, these are like natural mines. You can literally just go inside them, inside completely in the middle, basically, and start mining um, inside because the uh, actual mine shafts are already pre-made pre for you because they're so porous and have so many different entrances and a lot of empty space on the inside. So these are absolutely awesome. And they're very, very large. This one is about uh, 300 kilometers in, uh, in diameter. So is this one. And their moon is a little bit smaller. I think it's about half the size. And so, yeah, so these are pretty, very cool asteroids. This would have been one of the first objects that um, New Horizons 2 would have visited. And the next one would have been another dual body known as Bora Sisi. And it's actually a really cool asteroid as well. Possibly a dwarf planet, but we're not really sure if it's a dwarf planet just yet. Uh, and Bora Sisi does have a companion as well. It has a moon, but in this game it hasn't really been added yet. So Bora Sisi has a moon by the name of Pabu. Funny names, right? These names are actually from a novel called Cat's Cradle by um, Kurt Vonnegut. And in, in that particular novel, uh, Bora Sisi and Pabu are the names of the sun and the moon. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting name and it's a pretty interesting asteroid. So we can kind of land on the surface here just so you can see what it looks like. And there you go. So th this is uh, Bora Sisi. It's an asteroid that's approximately 150 kilometers, possibly actually larger than that. Uh, but in this game, it's about 150 kilometers in diameter. And just like the previous three objects I showed you, this one is also very porous and has very low density. And another object that we would have been able to visit is this, 2002 UX25, a much larger, um, very likely a dwarf planet and very beautiful as well. Has a lot of tholins, which are these brownish reddish colors on the surface. And it's uh, very likely very similar to Pluto in appearance, actually. And you can see there's a lot of mountainous regions here. And so this asteroid doesn't actually have a name or this dwarf planet, but we would have been able to visit it and check it out and take some really awesome photos and learn about the universe by observing these cool objects. But anyway, so unfortunately, like I mentioned, this mission will probably never happen. 
And it's a very, very simple reason. We just don't have any more fuel for the batteries. So until we can invent a battery that can work in deep space, not use any solar radiation, and provide enough energy for a very, very, very long time, we will unfortunately have to just continue to dream about these objects and just visit them in games like Space Engine and not in real life. New Horizons 2 would have been a pretty amazing mission and it would have been actually a really uh, great way for us to learn more about dwarf planets and essentially just visit them and possibly even crash into one of them just to see what happens. But uh, for now, for the next 20-30 years, we'll just have to figure something out and instead launch satellites and launch missions to much closer objects like Mars, possibly Venus, and possibly Jupiter, because Jupiter does have enough solar radiation that we can still use solar panels. But other than that, hopefully one day we'll discover some kind of an energy source that will allow us to travel further and launch a few more of these missions to these far objects far, far away, so we can take a few shots just like we did with Pluto. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully by the time that I make my next video in a few years, Last I heard, we actually started to produce a little bit of plutonium-238, but it will take a few years to produce enough for at least one mission, and it will very likely be very, very expensive, so it, people might actually abandon this idea. Other than that, maybe Russia will restart their reactors and start selling them back to the US, and maybe some other country decides to create their own reactor, or finds a much cheaper way to produce plutonium-238 so we can start producing these missions, because we do have money for them, we just don't have any fuel. And in any case, let's escape this beautiful dwarf planet, run away from it, and keep dreaming about it. Because for now, it is only a dream and not really a reality. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. Now you'll know a little bit more about New Horizons 2 and why there actually hasn't been any new missions to faraway objects in quite a while. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share this, don't forget to like it, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I love you guys, bye bye.